Good evening and welcome to Christmas Eve at Doug Church. Thank you for coming and making our celebration complete. Just like at your house, it, it makes the joy complete for your friends and family to come near. So at our house at Doug Church, it makes our joy complete for you to join us. So thank you for being here. Um, we're just friends and family here worshiping Jesus tonight. Amen? Yeah, this is not a performance. We're not on TV. Good? Yeah. We're here to relax and to worship Jesus. So I want you to really enjoy this. I don't want you to be concerned too much about, you know, if you've seen something wrong or anything like that, because we just want to enjoy singing the beautiful carols of of Christmas time to glorify Jesus. So let's just do that together. You see, we've got some special instruments here. Uh, you want to go ahead and give them a round of applause? <laughs> so because it's a special occasion, Christmas Eve, uh, they were kind enough to come, and we very much appreciate their being with us. Um, and so they're going to be um, they're going to be providing uh, instrumentation to go with our carol singing. So it may be a, a few harmonies that you're not used to. Just sing anyway, really loud, okay? Is that good? I want to tell you two places to watch out for. If you look in your bulletin uh, under congregation, please join in singing "O Come All Ye Faithful." Uh, I've got it in red for you, where it says, glory to God, all glory in the highest, and then it's got dot, dot, dot. Just be clued in that right there, we're going to hold highest for a little while, okay? So don't go rushing in to, oh, come let us adore him, because we're not there yet, all right? So those of you that are musical, we're going to hold highest for about four beats there. And then the same thing is going to happen... Let's see. The same thing is going to happen over here under candle lighting. Angels from the realms of glory now proclaim Messiah's birth. That birth is in red because we're going to hold that for about four beats. And uh, if you want to, you can rush ahead and come and worship, come and worship. But the rest of us are going to hold it for a little while, so you can just be watching out for that. Does that sound good? All right. Welcome, glad you're here. Beloved in Christ, we come by this service to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and to see the loving kindness of our God and the babe lying in a manger. Let us for, for open the Holy Scriptures and read the earliest tale of that disobedience to God's holy will, which is common to us all, and then the story of the birth of Jesus Christ our Lord to save us from our sins and to make us pure and happy. And let us thank Him with carols of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world and especially for peace and goodwill among all people, that they may learn to love one another as children of one God and Father of all. And because this would most rejoice his heart, let us remember before him the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged, and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sins have grieved his heart. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude no one can number, with whom in this Lord Jesus we evermore are one. These prayers and praises 
let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing, O come all ye faithful.
That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> you sang really great. Praise to the Lord Jesus. Let's see, do we have any spare seats available? There are some people that are standing. There are two here. That's good. There's one there. There's some over here. You've got two there. Okay, there's one here. So don't be embarrassed. Please come on up. Please come on up. Or allow others to. <laughs> so there's a seat here. There's a seat here. One here. One here. Two there. And two here. Yeah, praise the Lord. That's Christian love. All righty. Let's see, Scott Stewart, where are you? There you are. Scott's our lay leader, and he has a word to share with us. Scott? Working? There it is. Okay, um, I'm the lay leader here at Duck United Methodist Church. Uh, I've been asked to come up and say a few words. Um, first, uh, throughout the course of the year, I've been able to see uh, how God is in the life of both John and Amy. I see through their leadership and how they help us to see the light of God also. Um, I've been asked from you, the members of the church, we took up a little offering to say thank you for leading us and showing us God's light and helping us to learn more about him. So with that being said, I'd like to give our love offering to both Amy and John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amy and I would like to say that you make it a pleasure for us to be your pastors, not just on Christmas Eve, but every day of the year. We love you so much. Thank you. We come now to our mission moment uh, for the Christmas Eve offering. You may remember uh, that we had a hurricane not so long ago called Matthew. And Matthew did a lot of damage in a lot of places, also in our neighborhood. Um, there are still some people that have not been able to recover yet. And the United Methodist Church in the Beacon District wants to assist them. And so we're going to take up an offering tonight to assist uh, with that. 100% of what you give tonight will go toward helping people recover from the hurricane right here in our district. If you have a gift to give, which is your regular offering, and it is not to go to the hurricane offering, then write on your envelope, regular offering. Sound good? Thank you so much for doing that. One of the fun things about being the pastor at Duck Methodist is that God uses this congregation in really mighty ways to help people in our area and all across the world. A lot of you have sponsored orphans in Rwanda uh, with us this year, and a couple of weeks ago, we met and exceeded our goal uh, of 225 orphans to change their lives uh, for this year. So thank you for being a part of that. We're going to be going to Rwanda to visit them and also to visit those that we're going to adopt next year. And if you'd like to go with us to Rwanda in February, we'd love to have you join us. Just send me an email, give me a shout. We'll get you hooked up. Thank you. And now if the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the evening offering. Mike, would you hand me those plates, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Neil.
through 20. Would you stand for the reading of the gospel? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Goodwill toward men. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. At this Christmas time, we celebrate God made flesh in Jesus Christ. We celebrate God becoming a human being so that as we look to Jesus, we see who God truly is. This gift of Jesus, however, is not just about God becoming flesh in Christ Jesus. It is about God becoming flesh in us. The point of our redemption is not just that we are forgiven. Our forgiveness, our reconciliation with God through Christ is the beginning of faith, not the end of it. And forgiveness is not the goal of faith, even any more than being an infant is the goal of being born. The goal of human birth is maturity. And the goal of spiritual birth is spiritual maturity. For the Christian, spiritual maturity is becoming like Jesus. Jesus born in us, growing in spiritual maturity in us. Does this make us little Christ? Maybe. But little Christ, in what sense? Many of us on this Christmas Eve are here with our families. We are like our parents. That frightens some of us. Some of you look almost exactly like one of your parents. Some of you are natured like your parents, but all of us share DNA with our parents. So whether we like it or not, we are like our parents in many, many ways. And yet we are 
not our parents. One of the challenges of being a teenager and young adult is figuring out how we are different from our parents. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes this takes the form of rebellion. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes this takes the form of rebellion. We go as far in the opposite direction of our parents as we can so that we can figure out who we are apart from the shadow of our parents. We want to learn to know ourselves, and some of us do that by rejecting what our parents stood for. Some of us figure out who we are by embracing what our parents stood for, but in either case, we are absolutely unique. Our DNA is unique. Our experiences, our responses to those experiences are unique. Even identical twins are unique individuals, and those who know them well can tell them apart quite easily. Two weeks ago, I was in the choir office at the beginning of the 11 o'clock service, and I heard Barry Bright's voice, I thought. Oh, Barry's recovered from his knee replacement surgery faster than was expected and was able to make it to church today. That's what I thought, but of course, Barry wasn't there. It was Barry's son, Cole. Cole doesn't try to sound like Barry. Cole sounds like Cole, and yet, if you know Barry, you see and hear a lot of him in Cole. Same with Sammy Stewart. Just look at him, and you've probably got a good idea of what his daddy looked like at the same age. And I don't even have to mention how much Cooper Daniels is looking like David, nor indeed how strikingly similar Martha Clare is to her beautiful grandmother. And even though Sammy, Cooper, and Martha Clare share DNA with their parents and grandparents, they're a new creation, wholly unique, and yet beautifully shaped by their heritage and parentage. No one is going to mistake these young people for their parents. And yet, anyone who knows and loves their parents are deeply pleased to see the family resemblance. So when we say that the goal of the incarnation is that Christ is born spiritually in us so that we can become like Jesus, we mean this in the same way that a child who loves his parents becomes like them, not carbon copies, but rather we become like Jesus in the ways that are beautifully and uniquely appropriate for us. And he shapes each of us differently. There are certainly family traits that all lovers of Jesus share. We call them the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, meekness, mildness, temperance, faith. Some of us children of Jesus exhibit different ones of these fruits better and more in Christ-like ways than others. But all of us have that family resemblance. So where are you in your family resemblance to Jesus? Have you ever invited him to be born in you to become not just the Savior of the world, but your Savior? Have you invited him to be the sovereign king of your life, your Lord, your ultimate leader? Don't be afraid that as you allow him to inspire you, lead you, guide you, and shape you, that you'll become someone you're not. Instead, in him, you will become the fulfillment of exactly who you are. And all who love Jesus, we'll see the family resemblance in you. Tonight, this moment is a good time to say to the Lord Jesus, Lord, I offer myself to you. Come into my mind and heart and body. Forgive me for my sins and mistakes and let me walk with you. Be born in me anew and afresh. Tonight, I'm going to invite you to pray with me now, not out loud, maybe under your breath, 
maybe in your heart, but if you'd like to, you can repeat this prayer after me. Let's all bow our heads and pray. O Lord, as you were born in a manger in Bethlehem, be born in my heart tonight. As you offered your loving example and teaching to a dark world, let the light of your example and teaching guide me. As you gave your life a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, let your forgiveness wash over me, cleansing me and making me perfectly whole and clean. Let your Holy Spirit live in me so that I might become a living temple for you, Lord Jesus. I accept in you tonight, Lord, your Christmas gift of eternal life. Thank you. Thank you. Precious Lord Jesus. Amen. We come now to the time for the Holy Communion. As we do this, I want to draw your attention to a part of the prayer. The idea of the Holy Communion, communion, is that we commune with God and He communes with us. He shares his nature with us. We share our nature with him. Part of the prayer says that we ask the Lord to be so present in the bread and the grape juice that we will be filled with the body and blood of Christ and that Christ will make us be his body in all the world. You see, every Sunday when we celebrate communion, we're celebrating Christmas. God incarnate, not just in Jesus, but because of Jesus, God incarnate in each of his children through the power of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to turn in your hymnal now to page 20 for the great thanksgiving. In the choir loft, do y'all have hymnals? No, not really. Um, would a couple people from the first two rows share a hymnal or two? That would be great. Thank you, thank you. Look at all this Christian sharing going on. That's beautiful. In a minute, they'll have more hymnals than they've got people. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Have you got enough now? All right. That's great. Now, this is a musical setting. I hope you enjoy musical settings for the communion. If you don't know it, just sort of fake it. Sound good? Uh, but sing out if you dare. Let's stand for the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. Father, it is
is right that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. How much more on this holy night when you give your only son to us that we might become like him. And so with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus, we remember how on the night that you were betrayed, you took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to your disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Likewise, after supper, you took the cup, and when you had given thanks, you gave it to your disciples, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. upon these gifts of bread and wine, your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of Christ, and we may become the body of Christ for all the world. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. The body of Christ is broken for the sins of the world. The blood of Christ is poured out for the sins of the world. You may be seated. Let those who will assist with the communion come forward. This evening we will commune by intention. You'll come forward from the center aisle with one palm on top of another like sinners begging for the grace of God because that's what all of us are. 
you'll approach the bread, you'll hear the words, the body of Christ broken for you, and you'll say, Amen, or thanks be to God. You'll approach the cup, you'll hear the words, the blood of Christ shed for you, and you'll say, Amen, or thanks be to God. Dip the bread just slightly in the cup. If you dip it in there really far, it's going to fall apart. And the body and blood of Christ are so powerful that a little bit will sanctify you. <laughs> and then you can return to your seat by your side aisle. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed 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 for you. Lynn, would you serve me, please? begin the communion, we're going to have some beautiful pastoral music, and then when that has concluded, it'll be time to sing the cradle carols together that are listed in your bulletin. Come now to the feast, for all is now ready. You two go that way.
invite you to turn into your bulletin to the prayer after communion. Let us all pray. Almighty God, who hast given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit, through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. We come now to the time for the candle lighting. We'll do the candle lighting in this way. I'll light my candle from the Christ candle, then I'll light the candle of the ushers. The ushers will light your candle. Let me mention to you that the person with the lighted candle should hold their candle straight up. And the person who is lighting their candle should be the one to tilt theirs. We don't want you to get wax on yourself, so please be careful as you tilt and stand that it stays right where you want it. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them has the light shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given.
light a dark world through you. Amen.